Sharks are very interesting predators. They've been unchanged for millions of years because they are so well adapted to their environment. And what I'm going to do in this video is walk through some of the basic uh, anatomical structures of sharks and make them interesting. And what we have in front of us right here is called a male dogfish shark. And the first thing we're going to make a note of to the far left is something called the rostrum. And the rostrum is the very tip of the shark. And one of the things you'll make a note of with sharks is that their mouth is very close to their belly, the ventral side of the shark. And because of this, it has made sharks very well adapted for bottom feeding if they need to. And uh, it's also referred to as benthic feeding. And this was a very key advantage that occurred early on. And then also around the rostrum, you're going to find these little dots uh, on the shark's nose and they're called ampullae of Lorenzini. And these ampullae function to, uh, to interpret electromagnetic signals from uh, ion potentials or action potentials that are, occur in nearby fish. And so it makes the sharks very well suited to be able to detect uh, nearby animals, especially when they're about to attack. Now, as we look inside of the shark, we're going to make a note of how the shark has a, a forebrain, a midbrain, as well as a hindbrain. So this is the brain of the shark that we're seeing right here. And an, another very interesting anatomical feature of sharks is the presence of something called spiracles. And although we can't see it in this diagram, a spiracle is this little opening that is on the outside of the shark, and it allows the shark to be able to circulate water while it has food in its mouth. So that was a very key, uh, important uh, adaptation and we also see it in people or mammals uh, with the introduction of palates that allowed us to be able to have our mouth closed and be able to continue breathing. Now looking at the heart of a shark is pretty interesting. It's only two chambers and so we've got right here the atrium and this is where the deoxygenated blood is coming and it's being collected and then beyond that we have something referred to as the ventricle and uh, unlike mammals with the four chambered hearts, there's only one atrium and one ventricle with the sharks. The ventricle is, has the job of pumping the blood throughout the rest of the shark. The sharks do have a closed circulatory system. And one of the main uh, vessels that we should learn if we're studying sharks is called the conus arteriosus. And the analogy I like to draw is the aortic arch in uh, in humans, um, and so this the job of the conus arteriosus is to be able to kind of do this 180 degree turn of the blood that is being pushed out by the ventricle and move it out to the gills right here uh, to get oxygenated. And so as the oxygenated blood travels back down through the body, um, we can begin to look at some more of these structures. And this purple thing that we see here uh, is testes. So this is a male dogfish shark. And with sharks, uh, one of the things that zoologists make a note of is the fact that we're seeing pairs of these organs. And the pairs add redundancy, which was probably a, uh, an advantage in terms of evolution. Um, and we see that later on as a synapomorphy in later uh, species. And um, so after a shark consumes food, it will go through its mouth, enter into the stomach. So this is the stomach right here. And uh, as the food is being digested, there is going to be a liver required to secrete digestive enzymes. Uh, and in addition to that, there will be a spleen whose job is also to um, create those digestive enzymes present and then to filter the blood as it's traveling through the shark there will be uh, kidneys and one thing to make a note of especially when uh, we're looking at these physiology diagrams is while it gets very complicated um, fortunately uh, people have called things the same thing based on their function which makes our life a little bit easier so kidneys their job is always going to be 
uh, to filter blood and you know, the stomach is going to be involved in digestion as well as the liver um, and the spleen and one of the interesting things with sharks is that there is a valve sorry there's a valve uh, between the stomach and the uh, small intestine which is called the pyloric valve and uh, its job is pretty intuitive it's uh, to pinch off and open up depending on the presence of food um, and then the very entrance of the small intestine in sharks is called the duodenum. And what you'll make a note of that's interesting with sharks in their small intestines is these spirals. So they have spiral valves within their intestines and the job of having your food spiral throughout your intestine uh, is twofold. Number one, you're going to be increasing the amount of time that that food is going to be within your intestine as well as surface area. And uh, consequently, there's going to be, we're going to be maximizing the opportunities for nutrients to dissolve or diffuse from whatever the shark just ate uh, into the shark's bloodstream so it can metabolize uh, and catabolize those nutrients. So it is very important. And then um, we should also talk about the fins we're seeing on sharks. And I know this thing is getting a little bit cluttered, um, but w the a, a main fin that we care about on sharks is called the anterior dorsal fin, which is this top fin here. And it's the common one you see <laughs> people get scared of when they think of jaws. And then in addition to that, we have something referred to as the posterior dorsal fin. So there's two dorsal fins. And in addition to that, uh, shark, all sharks, male and female, are going to have these uh, pelvic fins on the posterior side, as well as these pectoral fins up top here. And uh, to make a final note here, one thing we see is something called a cloaca. And a cloaca is this common opening that's found in many organisms and species, not just sharks. We see it in uh, chickens as well and birds. Um, and the cloaca functions to be one opening for reproduction, excretion, and digestion. And when sharks mate, because we're looking at a male shark, it's going to have these external features referred to as claspers. Only the males are going to have it. Um, and then the females will receive the sperm from the male sharks through their cloacas and it will enter the uterus within the female shark where it will meet up with an egg. And uh, it is not uncommon to find twins and internal fertilization. You will find internalization in all sharks. That is a, a synapomorphy um, of them. And uh, I think that's going to wrap things up for this introduction. Uh, the last thing I can make a note of is we see a lateral line throughout the sharks. The lateral line is a bunch of mechanoreceptors that functions to interpret vibrations in water waves throughout the um, surrounding water and currents. And this allows sharks to be able to detect uh, very minute differences in their nearby environment, which makes them excellent predators. And so I think uh, that's gonna wrap things up. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.